Hello internet, in this video I will show you how I made my latest workbench. It is super heavy duty, it's also very practical in that you can store eight of the very large storage bins that you can buy at Costco or Home Depot or Lowe's. Now, if you watch the whole video and you decide you want to build one of these, let me know if you want to see some digital blueprints, if you will. I'll get a little bit better at Fusion 360 if I get enough comments to say, hey, send us the plans. I'll do a separate video on exact specifications of this workbench. It is my own creation. Keep watching. Okay, so we are beginning in my father's garage. This is my table saw. Some of you may recognize it from previous Scott Garage videos. And I have six four by four posts. They're 35 inches uh, in length. And I have over here what's called a vertical jig, which I created on Scott's Garage. I'll put a link to the video of creating this jig. And this jig allows you to make cuts uh, on posts like this. We're gonna be creating what's called a castle joint. And the, the blade is set to uh, two and a half inches, which will be the, the thickness of the rails that will uh, join the posts together. We can make several cuts uh, across uh, this jig, uh, turning the post. And so many cuts here, and let's begin. Okay, I'm back home now. I didn't film it, but I made three more passes on uh, just moving a little bit closer to the center uh, on, on each of these posts on both sides. And what I'll do is now take my, my jigsaw and it's wide enough for the blade. And I'm simply gonna cut like this, uh, flip it, uh, cut like this, and it'll look like this one. You can see I already, already did this one. So rather than use the table saw to make all the cuts, I'll be using my jigsaw, which makes it a lot easier. Okay, here I'm painting the posts with Valspar cabinet paint. I think this is called Gray Panther. That's the color I've chosen for this garage. Okay, constructing this workbench, I'll be using what's called a half lap joint. Now this is just an example. These are some scrap pieces of the, the two by three. For, for a half lap, you basically, basically measure halfway point of the width of whatever wood you're working with. And then, and then also the exact width of the wood this way. Uh, and do that for, for two of these. Um, and then they fit together like this, and it makes for a really solid, strong uh, joint. It will work really well on the workbench. It really is what will give the workbench tremendous strength. Now I've set my compound miter saw the exact depth, and so basically this comes down, it can only go so deep, and I'll be very carefully uh, measuring and, and cutting the outside edges. And then uh, basically just moving the piece of wood uh, back and forth. I'll probably have several stacked up here, do several at one time. And it's just a matter of, of lots of uh, cuts uh, until the, the half lap joint is created. And you'll see how I put it together in the workbench.
Okay, let me give you a close-up of what this looks like. I just love this joint. This is called a castle joint, and it's just very strong in, in every direction. I'm, I'm gonna glue it up really good here, and I'll, I'll be drilling it, put it putting a screw in, but um, you can just see here that, you know, it just fits uh, beautifully, nice and tight. And uh, after I square it up and glue it, um, I'll be putting some shims in there, a little bit of space in there, and I'll just break the shims off and then um, and screw it down. It'll be rock solid. Okay, I put everything in place. This is the top part of the workbench. This is kind of a dry run, so all the parts fit. I'm, I'm really pleased with, uh, with everything. And what I'm gonna do now is, is basically work on uh, one quarter at a time. I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna glue, glue it up really good and put it in place. I'll, I'll make sure that the, the legs are, are square. And then I'm gonna uh, drill uh, right down here. And I, I have a, a really long um, screw that will just kind of suck everything together. And I'll do that for uh, all six of the posts here and let it dry. Okay, so I forgot to film gluing the top side. The top side is now down and I'm working on the bottom side. Now the glue is running down. I'll have to clean it up and uh, paint over it, but no big deal. Okay, here I'm working on what will be the platform of the workbench and it's the 716 OSB. Okay, I didn't put it on camera, but I easily was able to set the piece down the, the floor of the workbench. And later I'll put some screws in. Uh, when I put the top on, I'll get everything uh, screwed down together. Now it's already extremely stable. I mean, this is about as solid as, it, as they get. Uh, but uh, putting uh, screws uh, along the studs below and the top here likewise uh, will just really uh, add to what's already a stable workbench. Uh, what I'm going to do now is start building the top and so I, I, I have the 716 OSB, two of those, and I'm going to stack them. But before I do that, I'll bring them over here and I'm going to glue them together. So it'll be almost an inch in thickness. And then when I add the hardboard, uh, it will be a one inch thick uh, total. So I'm just going to transport those, put them on here, um, glue them. And I'm going to put some small screws in while it's drying. And then I'll, I'll, I'll take the screws out and actually fit the table upside down and then attach it here. So it'll take overnight for the glue to dry. All right, I didn't film the whole thing, but I glued these two pieces together. And you may have noticed that there are now a set of shelves above the workbench. This is a separate project. I took a break from the workbench and I, I completed the shelf project. Uh, you can see a link to this project in the card here above. But now back to the workbench. What I'm gonna do now is secure the, the top uh, to the frame of the workbench and also the, the, the bottom piece uh, using these two inch wood screws. It's really important to do this. It's a very strong workbench, but you want to tie it all together. You don't want it to wobble at all. And by anchoring a bunch of screws in here, it'll just make it even more rock solid. This is the piece that was cut off from the top. I'm just going to use one of them, but uh, I'm just going to zip some screws in right here, and it's going to be hidden anyway, and it can't help but uh, you know, just add more strength and sheer strength to it.
Okay, I had some extra OSB. So there are now three layers of this and it's all glued together. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is put on what I call a sacrificial top and I'll be using cardboard for that. You know, this is very inexpensive. You get a four by eight sheet for whatever, 11, 12 bucks. And it is hardboard and it is, it is uh, very useful um, if you do use it correctly. So I'm gonna put that on top and then I'm gonna put a piece of trim around it and it'll be held in place. And then I'll put some two-way tape, put it in place. And then uh, to make this hardboard uh, work though, um, you have to seal it. Okay, to hold the sacrificial hardtop on, I'll be using Gorilla double-sided tape. Okay, next I'm gonna seal this with bare premium fast drying oil based polyurethane. I like the matte finish. I don't like gloss or anything like that uh, for a workbench. And here I'm putting the trim wood on. And then two more coats, wet coats of the polyurethane matte finish. Okay, I put three coats of the bare polyurethane, the matte finish, and it, it kind of has like a leather look. I really like how it looks, uh, but it doesn't really matter to me. It's, it's, a, it's a workbench top. I'll be pounding and doing all kinds of things. If I get some oil on there and other things, it's meant to be a, a working uh, workbench. Now, I designed this so that it would also hold storage bins at the standard size like you'd buy at Costco or Lowe's or Home Depot. So it'll hold eight of them. So stacked uh, two, 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 two. So two, four, six, eight. And I'll do that next. All right, here's the finished product. Let me give you the overall dimensions. It's 36 inches deep, uh, not including the trim, which is three quarters inch. By the way, the trim is nothing fancy. It's simply one of the studs ripped in, in half. I didn't miter the corners or anything. It's, it's just a workbench. Um, it is eight feet from end to end. As far as the, the overall height, it is uh, 36 and a half inches from the concrete to the very top of the workbench. And the top is pretty thick, about an inch and three quarter, with the three seven sixteenths OSB and then the eighth inch hardboard. And the, the legs here, uh, they're approximately uh, 35 inches tall. Uh, I did create a shelf, and the reason for that is, and just, uh, just on this end, not that end, uh, the reason for this is that I want to stand and you know, not worry about my feet uh, clunking into anything, you know, to be able to work on on the workbench. Now I said at the beginning of the video, this is my own design. I came up with this. And if you want me to provide a digital blueprint using Fusion 360, just a very exact breakdown of how I made this, please say so in the comments below. If there are enough comments to come in, uh, I will do such a video and then post it on my channel. Now this workbench, together with the shelves, completes step five of six of a finished garage. Now, step six is the floor, and my goal was to finish this garage, which had been left unfinished for 40 years. And we've lived here for, for one year, and it's taken me 10 months to, to bring it to this point. But step six, six is gonna have to wait. Uh, there's a reason I have the heater uh, going, and the reason why there's water melted on the floor. And my whole goal was to finish this garage before the, the snow flew. And that, uh, that hasn't happened because we woke up this morning to seven inches of snow in the ground. It still falls only the third week in October. It's only 17 degrees outside though. And therefore, the floor is gonna to have to wait till warmer temperatures later this spring or this summer. Now, if you got any value at all from this video, please give me a like. It costs you nothing, but is of great value to me. And as usual, have a great day, and we will see you in the next video.